morning, Algebraniacs, although it's probably evening. You're watching this tonight. Welcome to the Johnson Kendra video hour. But it is not an hour. Oh my, maybe this one will be. We'll just find <laughs> out. <laughs> Gotta buckle your chin straps, folks. Here we go. Section 5.3, solving polynomial equations. Lots of polynomials, lots of ways to solve them. Okay, we're going to review how to solve by factoring. Um, some of the factoring methods we've already used and learning a few new techniques. Now, what are we really finding when we solve? When you see the word solve, the points that cross the x-axis are the zeros, or we call them solutions, or we call them roots. Okay, and the highest power is going to be how many they're going to, how many answers there's going to be. All right, remember to solve. If you factor the polynomial, that means put it in the parentheses. Then you set it equal to zero, and then you solve each individual parentheses. You can get real or imaginary solutions. Okay, the imaginaries are when you have that negative under the radical. And that's going to come from quadratic formula. We actually have not had that happen yet uh, when we are solving by factoring, and that's going to happen today. All right, so you might get a negative number under there, and so we'll have to use that I letter to represent imaginary. All right, first thing you always do is look for greatest common factor. First thing we do is make sure we set it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract this 3x from both sides. And make sure I put it in standard form, putting the highest one first, and then go down from there. Something's wrong with my threes today. All right, now, greatest common factor. I see every one of them has an x. No numbers are common, so we're just going to take the x out. So 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. So we're done! No, no, no. You always have to look to see if there's something else you can factor. So x is its own little factor, and this I'm going to factor into two parentheses. Using the four spot method. Oh, all right. I'll go back and do that. Okay, so I have four spots. Bring down the 2x squared. Bring down the negative 3. And then I have a negative, so one of these is plus, one of these is minus. All right, then I multiply 2x squared times 3, and I get 6. Our factors of 6 are? 1 and 6. Okay. Or 2 and 3. Okay, and then 3 and 2 would be the same, so we don't worry about that. Now, which one will get us a negative 5? This is always a hard one for a lot of people because you 2 or 3 or 1 and 6 could work depending on your signs. And since we have a positive and a negative, we need to use the 1 and the 6 plus 1 and a minus 6 makes a negative 5. Right. So that's the only way to do that. And what about this little x you've got on the outside? What happens with that? He just hangs around okay. until the end. Okay. So we'll leave that there. Then I want to factor out something they have in common here. X. Right. So I'm going to put that over there. Then I'm going to take out an x. Left with 2x plus 1. Mm -hmm. And then what about these two? Negative 3. You have to take the negative if it's there. And then I'll change the sign, 2x plus 1. Right. Now, you know you did it right if you have, if the 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1 match. So this x is going to stay there. Take out 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1. And then what I have left is this and this. That goes in the other parentheses. So we're done. Uh, almost. Last thing we have to do is set each of those equal to zero. See how it's equal to zero up here? You have to keep going when you see that. So the first part, so I have x equals zero. That one is done. Then I have 2x plus 1 equals zero. You'd subtract 1 divided by 2. Right on. So 2x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1 half. Then my last one, x minus 3. Add 3. I see that you have three answers there. Yeah, that, I like to always check. See how that's a three there? The third degree polynomial. All right, so you should come up with three answers. If you don't, let's say you forgot that first one, you only get two. Well, make sure you go back and check for that little one that's hiding. All right, the next one. You want to get rid of that for me? Sure. Okay, this next one, what what if you can't keep factoring? Why don't you tell me what you're, you would do in this case? Well, we need to have it in standard form, so I'm going to move the 6x cubed over. 
Uh, and I'm actually going to put it in the middle so I have standard form. This time I see that I have a greatest common factor of 3, and it's actually going to be 3x squared that I take out. That's common in everything. Then I go back and divide those. This will turn by 2x squared. Uh, and let's see, that'll be a minus 2x and then a plus 4 equal to 0. You told me that we need to always try to keep going, and I think that if I try to factor that, it actually does not factor. So the next thing we want to do, we still go and set these things equal to 0 to solve. This one we divide by 3 on both sides. We get x squared equals 0, and you square root uh, both of those. 0, the fact that uh, when you... When you square root both sides, you need to include a plus or minus on your answer, but you can't really have plus or minus zero. This actually means that one of our zeros is zero with a multiplicity of two. And you don't necessarily need to include that, but it will help you when you check your answers at the end and you got to make sure you have a total of four. And if you have to graph it, you'll know what the graph looks like right. at that spot. Okay, for this one, though, if I have this polynomial equal to zero, I can't just do simple... Uh, isolating the x's. So we actually have to use quadratic formula when you cannot factor this. So opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a. Then I have 2 plus or minus. That's going to give me a positive 4 underneath minus 16 all over, by the way my a was a 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Keep going. 2 plus or minus, that's going to be negative 12 under there. I feel like that was a test question. Yeah, looking like it. <laughs> uh, simplifying. Split your 12 into root 4 and root 3, and there's an i. So therefore, 2i root 3 over 2. Heart surgery. Final answer, 1 plus or minus i root 3. Mrs. Kendra, how many answers does that actually represent? There's two. One's with the plus, one's with the minus. Two answers, and remember, this was two answers, so technically I got my four answers there. All right. All right, one more review question here. This is the difference of squares. Remember we said anything that comes in the form a squared minus b squared factors into a plus b, a minus b. That only works when they are both perfect squares. So if you look, I have that here. The shortcut is to square root the first term, and you get an x. That's going to go in the first blanks. Square root the last term. That's going to be 5. 1's a plus and 1's a minus. If you were to set those equal to 0, I'd have x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract the 5. I'll get negative 5 as an answer. And then my other one, x minus 5 equals 0. Add the 5 this time. Positive 5 as an answer. Two answers for a quadratic polynomial, which makes sense. Very good. We're going to actually save this special case for part two. Yep. And we're going to skip on to another one. Ms. Kendrow's going to do that one. All right. So this is a fancy case of something you've already done. You know that when you factor x squared, you're going to break it up into x and x. Well, we have x to the fourth. So instead of x and x, to make x squared, we're going to need x squared and x squared to make x to the fourth. And it only works when you have x to the fourth and then the next term is squared and then the last term is just a number that has to look like that. Right. This number and this number, they have to be, one has to be half of the other one in order for this process to work. Now we just go back to our normal factoring. 8 is either 8 and 1 or 4 and 2. Because I have a 2, I'm going to use the 4 and the 2. It's a minus 2, so minus 4 plus 2. Now, this is where you got to be careful. you got to watch what you're doing. This is a difference of two squares, just like the example we did a minute ago. So I'm going to break that up into x plus 2, x minus 2. This is not a difference of two squares, so there's really nothing we can do for that one. So we're going to leave it for right now. Then, just like the other ones, we have to set them equal to 0. So this one, I'm going to get x equals negative 2. This one, I'm going to get x equals 2. Now this one, because it's got a square, is going to be a little bit different. So x squared equals negative 2. When you square root both sides, what happens is I get x equals plus or minus. Whoa, 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 plus or minus? Yeah, square rooting always gets plus or minus. 
Okay. And then the negative comes out as the I. The square root of 2 we can't do anything with. So how many answers do I have right here? That technically is two answers. Right. The plus is one, the minus is the other. And then I have this one. Oops, nope. This one and this one. So I have one, two, three, three and four. four. So that's why we have four here. All right. All right, let's see if we can do another one here. Here's the x4 and cut in half is x2. So I can do that by doing the same thing I just did. So x squared x squared gives me the x4. 6 is, the, is just 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. I need a 7, so I'm going to choose the 6 and the 1. Everything's plus, so we'll keep it that way. Can you keep factoring this one? Well, no, because there's no minus signs and there's no perfect squares. So we're just going to start setting them equal to 0. Okay. So we'll do this. This is x squared equals negative 6. Square root both sides. I get x equals plus, plus or minus. minus i for the negative, and root 6 just stays. Over here, x squared equals negative 1, square root both sides. x equals plus or minus i root 1, or just i, because root 1 is 1. How many answers is that? I got 2 here and 2 here, and that's what I needed. I needed 4. Very good. All right, let's do this one. It's kind of fancy. Now, what did I say about the two numbers? This has to be double what that is. Right, so does that work? So I can do the same thing. So I cut it in half, x3 and x3. The 10 is either 10 and 1 or 5 and 2. I need a 9. I'm looking at 10 and 1. I need one of each because of that minus sign right there. So I need plus, plus 10, 10 minus 1. So. Right here, we're going to stop because we haven't talked about cubes yet. That's going to be in part two. So I wanted to just point out the six and the three of this one in case you run into any of those. All right. Wow. Okay, you can loosen your chin straps now. We'll talk again tomorrow. Bye-bye.